Hello again, fellow podcaster, and welcome back to Pod Theory. I am your host, Jason Sircone, and today I am going to analyze the question, has podcasting replaced blogging? Now, I consulted my trusty Google Assistant to pull a couple statistics to share with you today in order to answer that question accurately. Did you know there are over 600 million active blogs on the World Wide Web today, according to the website growthbadger.com? And that's out of 1.7 billion active websites. Now, the flip side of that, and we can thank our friends at techjury.com for this statistic, there are more than 1.5 billion inactive websites on the internet today. Now, TechJury did not give the number of inactive blogs that are contained within that 1.5 billion, but based on our statistic from Growth Badger, let's just estimate and say there's about 500 million inactive blogs on the net today. So why did those blogs go inactive? Why, why did they enter that flatline state? Well, there's a number of reasons that we can consider. One of those reasons could be that the owner of the blog could have moved on to other projects. I mean, hell, I know that I'm responsible for at least two or three of the dead blogs that are on the internet today. And I don't even know the addresses, so you can't look them up. The blog was not meant for long-term use. It was maybe just meant for something short-term where a few posts went up and then once the campaign or whatever it applied to was done, no more content went to that blog and therefore it went inactive. Perhaps the blogger ran out of content and had nothing else to talk about. You know, business owners may have closed their business and therefore their blog was no longer relevant and they had nothing to contribute to it. Or maybe the blogger moved on to a new means of connecting with their audience. Now, in the early 2000s, if you can remember back this far, blogging was huge. Everybody was blogging. And blogging was fun. It was it was a very good medium. It I, I don't believe in that initial state. It's, it's pretty much like anything that's come along in, in our generation. It wasn't necessarily meant to be used for business. Think of Facebook and you think of Twitter and you think of all of these websites that have evolved over time and all these social networks. They weren't necessarily built and designed to be used for business. I believe blogging was the same way. Blogging was used more for people just to capture their thoughts and Gosh, if you go back and watch The Social Network, that's Mark Zuckerberg was blogging while he built the controversial face mesh site that inevitably led to the development of Facebook, but that's a story for another day. The point is, blogging evolved over time, and businesses of all shapes and sizes looked at it as a great platform for communicating with their audience. They could supply up-to-the-minute information about their products, about services, about news within their company, about innovations in their industry, and they could put it out on a daily basis, sometimes even more than daily. We still see websites and blogs today producing content even hourly. People still refer to blogs for news, for entertainment, for information, but these days, typically, and this isn't a blanket statement, but more and more each day we're seeing this, Blogging is supplemented by some sort of audio or visual component. Oftentimes, you're going to find video embedded, and you're going to find podcasts as well, because both of those mediums have proven to capture the attention of people on the web much more than just the written word. So, I'm going to go back to the original question. Has podcasting replaced blogging? Maybe not completely, but... I believe we're living in a time frame when we're going to see it happen. Now, if you base the answer to that question strictly on the numbers that we discussed before, it's like comparing apples to bowling balls. And currently, the number of active podcasts is just over a million, and I discussed this on past episodes of Pod Theory already. Compared to 600 million active blogs and Gosh, the number of active podcasts is nowhere near the number of inactive blogs. So there's still a long way for podcasting to go. But that's what makes podcasting so freaking powerful right now. More and more people are turning to podcasts every day to learn, to grow, to be entertained. It's becoming such an accepted medium. And again, more and more people are gravitating towards it. It makes it the blogging of today. Now, if you own a company that has a blog, complementing it with a podcast is a great move. 
Why? Because in addition to the great written content that you're producing, your audience can enjoy passive content that doesn't require 100% of their attention like a blog post would. Your audience can enjoy your podcast while taking a walk, commuting, or taking care of chores around the house, you name it. They, they, they can't do that with a blog post, but just know, because they have already gravitated to your brand, you're giving them an innovative medium to stay connected with you. And because they are a loyal advocate of your brand, they're going to come back and read your blog as well. So a podcast makes a fantastic compliment to your blog and any content effort that you're currently producing in a written format. More brands and more entrepreneurs are beginning to move in this direction. Are you? So that's going to wrap up today's installment of Pod Theory. If you like what you hear, please rate and review the show. Subscribe so you know when new episodes go live every Monday through Friday. And share this episode with someone who needs an injection of podcast knowledge. Good talk. I'll see you back here tomorrow. This has been Jason Sircone on Pod Theory.